Let's do a card trick. Here I have the disappearing card box. I'm going to remove the deck from the box. Now normally you'd need a whole deck of cards for a trick. I'm just going to need one playing card. So let's remove one. We'll use this in a bit. I'll put the rest of the cards back in the box. Now here's the cool part. Watch. I just wave this card over the other 51, and just like that, they all vanish. How's that? Here's how to perform the disappearing card box. The secret here lies in the fact that the deck of cards is really not a deck of playing cards. It's actually what we call a shell. Meaning that when it's inside the box this way, it looks like a deck of playing cards. But when it's in the box the other way, it looks like it's disappeared. Now here's how you perform it. You start with the box inside the case with the front and red top showing. You then very carefully slide it out. Be careful not to show the audience the back side or else they'll see that it's a shell. So I suggest holding it from the top with your left hand. Open the card box up and then remove the single playing card inside. Now actually this is the only one that can be removed. Place that on the table and close the box back up. You're then going to slide it back into the case. However, this time, keep the case case down or face down and slide it in so that now from the bottom, it looks like the case is gone. You then place it on the table. Wave the card over it, snap it, and now all 51 cards have vanished. And that's how to do the disappearing card box. Now here's the rabbit and rings trick. Magicians are always thought to be using rabbits in their show. And today, we're going to be using this little rabbit right here. We're going to place him on this piece of paper. And we're going to use the rings and this card to make him completely vanish. Watch. We'll cover him up with the card and the rings. Wave my hand, snap my fingers, and now the rabbit has completely vanished. Now making him come back is just as easy. Watch. We'll cover up the ring just like that. Snap my fingers again, and now the rabbit has again reappeared. And that's the rabbit and rings trick. Okay, now here's a secret on how we make this little guy vanish. The secret lies in the fact that this ring has a second piece of paper that matches the card here on the table. Now, when the rabbit is underneath that card, it looks like the ring is just sitting on the paper. That's what the secret is. Now here's how to perform it. You start with the rabbit on one side and the ring with the piece of paper on the other. You take the card, place it over the ring, and then take the second ring, place it over the card. Place all three items together now directly over the rabbit. Wave your hands, snap your fingers, and now take off the ring, then the card, and show that the rabbit is gone. Of course, he's just hiding under that second piece of paper. Now to make him come back, you'll just repeat the process in reverse. Place the card back on the ring, place the ring back on the card, wave your hands, snap your fingers, move all three items to the other side to show the rabbit is now back, and everything is normal. Now I'm going to show you the multiplying rabbit trick. It's a lot of fun to do, but you'll need a friend to perform it for. So, oh, there you are, Kiva. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> now, it's important to note, Kiva does not come with a magic set, so you'll need to get one of your own friends to help you out with this trick. Now, Kiva, I've got a mommy and a daddy rabbit here, all right? Mm -hmm. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold on to one of them, and I need you to hold on to the other one. Okay. So place it in your hand, close your hand around it, make a fist. Now watch, if I snap my fingers, the mommy rabbit jumps over to the daddy rabbit, and now you've got both of them. Wow. Pretty neat trick, huh? Yeah. All right, let's do it again. This time I'm going to have you hold on to both rabbits, the mommy and the daddy. Okay. Hold out your hand. I'm going to ask you to hold on to both. Put them in your hand. Squeeze your hand tightly. Now watch close. I'll wave my hand, snap my fingers, and now you had mommy and daddy, but now you've got a whole family. Look. Oh, my gosh. There's mommy, daddy, and a whole bunch of little baby rabbits. <laughs> Pretty neat trick, huh? Amazing. Thanks for your help. No problem. The multiplying rabbit trick is easy to perform, but it will take a little bit of practice to pull off the necessary sleight of hand. Now to begin, take the big rabbits and put those on the table. The small rabbits, you're going to hide those in one of your pockets. For me, they're hidden all down here in my left hand jacket pocket. Now, there's one move you're going to need to practice for this trick, and that's where you pretend to place a rabbit into your hand. Here's what it looks like to the audience. You take the rabbit and place it in your hand. Actually, the rabbit's now clipped under my thumb. Here's how to perform it so you understand. 
place the rabbit in your hand. As you begin to close your hand around the rabbit, your fingers pull the rabbit back into your hand and your thumb grabs it. Now it's the timing that makes it look like you're grabbing the rabbit. Just like that. All right? Now to perform, you're going to tell your assistant that you're going to hold on to one rabbit and she's going to hold on to the other. So you say that and you pretend to take the rabbit and hold it in your hand. Actually, it's now hidden in your hand. You then reach over and grab the second rabbit and squeeze the two together. She thinks it's just that one, but you place both rabbits into her hand. She holds on to the two. You have nothing here, but they think that there's one here and there's one here. You then snap your fingers, open your hand, and show them that the rabbits jump from one hand to the other. Now, in that moment of astonishment, you'll step back and put your hands in your pockets. As you do that, you'll secretly get all the little baby bunnies and hide them in your fingers. Now, what I do is I clip them right in my fingertips so you can very casually bring your hands out and it looks like everything's fine. You'll then reach over and grab both of the big rabbits, put them together in your hand, and scrunch them together with all the baby rabbits. You then place the whole bunch in the hand of your assistant. They hold on all the rabbits, you then wave your hand over the two, snap your fingers and tell them that now there's a whole family. And now you've got the two big bunnies as well as the four baby bunnies. And that's the multiplying rabbits trick. I'm now going to show you the crazy angel coins trick. Now, have you ever looked at the back of an old style quarter? There's an eagle on the back. Do you know why that's there? That's so that the quarters can fly. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to place four quarters into this container. That's one, two, three, and four. Four quarters inside. These four quarters are going to travel from one hand to the other. Watch how fast it happens. Bring the quarters over here. Watch close. One, two, three. Just like that. All four quarters jump. That's one, two, three, and four. And they're gone from over there. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The quarters don't really fly. You see, this trick works because of the container. The container on one side has enough room for four quarters. The other side has enough room for one quarter. Now before the performance, you're going to take one quarter and place it in the container and stick it down with a little bit of double-sided tape. Push it down hard so it doesn't fall out later. All right? Turn that face down and now you're ready to begin. To perform the trick, you place all four quarters inside the container. Now remember, which side you had showing later because you're going to want to make sure the top quarter here matches what you have showing on the bottom. In this case, I have the eagle showing here and the eagle showing here. Place all four quarters inside the container, then place it on your fingertips. You're now going to explain to your audience that the quarters are going to fly from one hand to the other. As you explain that, you close your hand. But as you close your hand, you're secretly flipping the case upside down. Watch what happens when I close my hand. It flips upside down. Now, the single quarter is on top, and the four quarters are on the bottom. You now explain you're going to do it again. Bring the quarters up, sorry, bring the case up, leaving the four quarters in your hand. You may want to make sure you keep your fingers closed or bring your hand down so they don't see the four quarters in your hand. I'll do it again. Take it out of your hand, place the, ca the case on your fingertips, and you're going to do the same move again, closing your hand to flip it to the other side. I'll show you again. On your fingertips, you close your hand, turn it face down. You then say one, two, three. Open your hands, and now they'll see the empty side over here and the four quarters in your other hand. And that's the crazy angel coins. Now I'm going to show you the traveling handkerchief trick. Watch. I'm going to take this orange handkerchief. I'm going to place it into my fist all the way in. Just like that. Now watch. One, two, three. It completely vanishes. Actually, it travels right over here to my other hand. Pretty amazing, huh? Would you like to learn how to do the traveling handkerchief trick? Well, let me show you how it's done. All you'll need is your secret thumb tip. You'll also, of course, need a small handkerchief. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a tissue. To start, put the thumb over your real thumb. Now, when you hold the handkerchief, they won't see your thumb behind it. Everything looks completely clean. You'll now show the handkerchief 
As you do that, stroke the handkerchief, but grab the thumb and transfer it into your fist. You now have the thumb tip hidden in your hand. Next, place the handkerchief into your hand. Where are you putting it really? Into the thumb tip. Poke it almost all the way in, and on the last poke, use your thumb to push it in. However, when you remove your thumb, bring the thumb tip with it. Now, if you have your hand with the fingers down, it'll be easier to hide the thumb tip. Also, don't worry. Your audience is not looking for a secret thumb, so they're not going to be looking over here. They're looking over here. You need to keep the focus over here as well. Wave your hand over, and now open your fingers, and the handkerchief is gone. Where is it? Well, it's traveling through the air. Now, to make it reappear, you're going to reach out with your left hand and pretend to grab the handkerchief. Actually, grab your thumb, remove the thumb tip, and then reach in with your other hand and reproduce the handkerchief. Place your thumb back in the thumb tip behind the handkerchief, and now you're clean again. Now, that's the traveling handkerchief trick. Now, I know you're not supposed to play with your food, but I can't help myself. Watch, I'm going to take this handkerchief and make a little pocket in my fist. I'm now going to fill that pocket up with salt. Just a little bit is all we need. There we go. Now watch close. This is the cool part. All I need to do is wave my hand over the salt in one, two, three. It completely vanishes. Now, where's the salt? Well, let's make it reappear. Watch. Just like that. And now the salt has reappeared completely. To perform this miracle, you're going to need your secret thumb tip, a salt shaker, and a handkerchief or a table napkin. Now, I've taken the top off the salt shaker to make it a little easier to pour it. To start, place the thumb tip over your thumb. You'll then take the handkerchief and show it empty. No need to worry about them seeing the thumb because it's hidden behind the handkerchief. You'll then place the handkerchief over your hand. You're going to make a pocket in your fist by placing your thumb into your hand. Now. Be sure to leave the thumb tip behind in your fist. Now, that's where you're really going to be pouring the salt. So the thumb tip's hidden in your hand now. You'll get the salt and pour it into the thumb tip. Don't pour too much or you won't be able to get your thumb in later. Now, pour the salt in. Use your thumb again. Make sure it's all the way inside. However, when you do that, you steal the thumb back out. So again, you pour the salt. Show it's really packed in there. Steal the thumb back out. Wave your hand over the salt. And then show that the salt whew, has vanished. Again, show the handkerchief empty and your thumb is hidden behind it. Make sure you don't turn your thumb up or else the salt will fall out. You need to keep it pointed down so the salt stays at the bottom. Now all you do, you're going to need to do is put the handkerchief on the table. Reach in the air as if you're grabbing something. As you do that, grab the thumb tip off of your thumb. Then just turn your hand down and the salt reappears. Now when everyone's looking at the salt, that's when you get a chance to put your thumb back in the thumb tip, get your hands out of the way, and collect your well-deserved applause. Here's another version of the traveling handkerchief trick. Watch close. I'm going to take the handkerchief and place it into my right hand. Poke it all the way down inside. Watch close. One, two, three. The handkerchief's gone. Where is it? Well, it's right down over here in my pocket. Pretty cool, huh? You may prefer this version of the traveling handkerchief because at the end, you ditch the thumb tip in your pocket so nothing's to be found. Let's go over the steps. To begin, you'll need the thumb tip on your thumb and you'll need a small handkerchief. If you don't have a handkerchief, you could also use a tissue or a napkin. To start, stroke the handkerchief and bring the thumb from one hand and leave it in your fist. Now, now take the handkerchief and poke it all the way into your fist, actually placing it into the thumb tip. Poke it all the way, except for a little bit. On the last poke, use your thumb to poke in the handkerchief and remove both the handkerchief and the thumb tip on your thumb. Keep all the focus over here on your right hand. Wave your hand over, and now show the handkerchief has vanished. Now, to make it reappear, all you're going to do is place your hand with the thumb tip into your pocket. It goes into your pocket, then use your other hand to grip the thumb and steady it as you then take your thumb and forefinger to remove the handkerchief from your pocket. Because you're holding the thumb tip, there's no worry that it'll come out as well. You can then show the handkerchief has reappeared and your hands are clean and nothing is to be found.
Now I'm going to show you a classic of magic. It's called the cups and balls, and it's been done since the ancient Egyptian times. All it uses is three small balls and three small cups. One, two, three. To start, I'm going to place one of the cups over one of the balls. I'll place a ball on top of the cup, cover it with the other two cups, snap my fingers, and now it melts right through and joins the other one. Let's do it again. We'll cover up the balls. Now we'll make the ball go through two cups this time. Place it on top, cover with the last cup, snap my fingers, and now it joins the other two. And that's the cups and the balls. Now I'm going to show you how to do the cups and balls trick. In order to make it easier to demonstrate, I'm going to use these clear cups as opposed to the purple ones. That way you'll be able to follow exactly what happens. Now in addition to the three cups and the three balls, we also have one more thing, and that's a fourth ball. This ball the audience will never see though. Here's what you do. You're going to hide it between the first and the second cup in the middle. All right. Now in the beginning you can show the cups by counting them one, two, three. Make sure when you move that second cup, you do it quickly so the ball doesn't fall out. All right, now you're ready to begin. You're not going to pick up the cups, you're going to place the three cups on the table, but you're going to use the middle cup to cover the middle ball. Place one cup on the table, place the second cup, cover the middle ball, and the third cup over here. Now, when you place that first cup down, make sure you go quickly so the second ball doesn't fall out. Just like that. Now you're ready to begin. You'll place the ball on top of the middle cup, cover with the other two cups, snap your fingers, and apparently the ball melts right through. Now you're ready to go again because you now have another ball secretly hidden in between the second and third cups. You do it one more time. Place one cup down here, place the middle cup on top of the other two, adding the third one. Again, be careful to go down quickly so it doesn't fall out. Place the last ball on top of two cups. Cover with the last cup, snap your fingers, and now that's all three balls down at the bottom. And again, that's one, two, three cups, and one, two, three balls, and that's the cups and balls. Now I want to show you the bottle and the glass switcheroo. Basically, I've got a bottle of cola, I've got a glass full of cola, and I've got two empty tubes. Now the tubes, they fit over both the bottle, and they also fit over the glass. So now let's cover the bottle, let's cover the glass. Watch close. The bottle and the glass are going to switch places on the count of three. One, two, three. Just like that, they've switched places. Now, I'm going to switch them back. One, two, three. Look at that. The bottle and the glass are back in their original places. You're not impressed, are you? All right, well, I'll, I'll do it again. Only this time, I'll, I'll do it only halfway so you see it. Here we go. Watch. Cover the bottle. Cover the glass. One, two, three. Just like that, the bottle and the glass now, they've really switched places. Now, I'll switch them back one last time. Watch, cover up the glass, cover up the bottle. Here we go, one, two, three. Now the bottle and the glass are back to normal. And that's the bottle and the glass switcheroo. All right, now the secret to the bottle and glass switcheroo is that you really have two glasses and two bottles. Now. How do you hide these things? Let me show you. Basically, you'll notice that one of the bottles is smaller than the other one, and that enables you to put the big one over the small one. You'll also notice that there's some holes in the back of the bottles, which enables you to line them up so that from the front, they'll look the same. Those two bottles go over one of the glasses. Now, if you're having trouble, you can use the glasses empty so that they're upside down, and then the smaller end will be up, and it might be easier to put the bottles over the glasses. Also. One of the reasons the hole is in the back is so that you can put your thumb in the hole and pinch the glass and lift up the two bottles and the glass together to show that it's just a bottle. So to start, you could say, I have a bottle and a glass. Secretly, though, you have the glass inside the bottle and the second bottle. You getting all this? Okay. Now, you need to set up the trick. To begin, you show the tubes empty. You'll then demonstrate how the tubes cover both the bottle and the glass. When you do this, you place one tube over the bottles. Then use your index finger to pinch one of the bottles and drag it up off the bottle. Now you've got a bottle inside the tube. You'll then place this tube over the glass. Then take the second tube and place it over the first bottle. 
Now you're really set to go because you have two bottles under the tubes, but if you use your fingers and pinch the two shells, you also have two glasses. All right? So two bottles, two glasses. Now you're ready to begin the trick. In the beginning, I showed the bottle over here and the glass over here. How did I do that? I pinched my finger against the bottle and lift up, and I can show the glass. Show the bottle, show the glass. Cover them up, wave your hands, and say they switch. I then joked around, I switched them back, and then did it again for real. This time you show the bottle and the glass, cover it up, snap your fingers, and now this time you're going to pinch on this side, but not on this side. And show that the bottle is now over here, and the glass is over here. Now at this point, be careful not to tilt the tubes up because they would see then that there's another bottle inside this tube. So keep them face down. And to make them go back, again, you'll cover up the glass, cover up the bottle, snap your fingers, and now use your index finger, pinch the bottle on this side, now the glass is back over here, and the bottle is back over here. Now to clean up, all you need to do is get this bottle back onto this one. So I show, again, tube over here, tube over here, and now, I can pick both tubes up and show the tubes empty and the bottle and the glass back to normal. And that's the bottle and glass switcheroo. Give the routine some practice and I guarantee you'll have a lot of fun with it. Here's a great trick you can perform with your magic wand. All you need to do is take the wand and place it in your hand. Now watch, I'm gonna use my other hand to steady my hand. And if I'm lucky, the magic wand will actually magnetize to my bare hand, just like that. Now, you might have guessed what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm actually just holding it on my finger. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's do it again. This time I'll really do it. Watch close. Here we go. Yup, it's magnetized. For real, look. Take my other hand away. Now, it really is magnetized to my hand. But if I snap my fingers, it'll become unmagnetized. Watch. One, two, three. Just like that. Here's how to perform the magnetized wand trick. For this trick, you'll need a second item, and that's a pen. And it's hidden in your sleeve. Before the performance, I took a pen and slid it underneath the band of my watch and hid it in my sleeve. You'll need this later. So for now, keep it hidden. The magnetized wand trick happens in two phases. The first phase is just a gag. You place the wand in your hand and use your other hand to steady your wrist. You'll now use your index finger to press the wand against your palm. Open your fingers and show that the wand is really magnetized to your palm. Of course, your audience will probably be quick to figure out that it's just your other hand holding against your palm. Of course, they're right. But now you'll do it again and you'll really impress them. For this version, You'll hold the wand in your hand and use your other hand to extend the pen out into your wrist. Now, you use the pen to hold the wand against your palm. Press your hand against the wand and against the pen and enough tension will be created to hold it there and make it look like it's magnetized. You'll now hold it in your hand, use your other hand to steady the wrist, open your fingers and show them that it's magnetized. But now, for the big moment, you take your hand away and show them that it really is magnetized to your hand. A little bit of acting, and you can show that it really is stuck there. To make it unmagnetized, all you'll do is take your hand and pull it away from the pen, and that'll make the wand fall to the ground. Again, it's pressed against it, a little bit of loosen, and it falls to the ground. Now, in performance, you'll say, I'll make it unmagnetized by snapping my fingers, and the wand falls down. Now all you need to do is push the pen back in your sleeve where it'll be totally hidden and you're left clean. That's the magnetized wand trick. I love to do magic with ordinary objects. And here I have an ordinary paint can. I'm going to fill the paint can up with this glass of water. Watch. I'll put the water in the can and now all I need to do is tap the can with the magic wand. And just like that, all the water has vanished. Look, I'll prove it to you. See, all the water is completely gone. Just a single drop left. Now, let's make it come back. I'll tap the can again, and just like that, now, all the water has reappeared. 
Pretty neat trick, huh? Here's how to use your magic paint can. If you look closely at the can, you'll see that there's a secret compartment built into one side of the can. The secret compartment's on one side, but not on the other. When you pour the water from the side of the secret compartment, the water will disappear. When you pour from the other side, it will pour out. Now, how do you tell which side is which? Well, you can certainly see if you look down inside, but it also helps to attach the label so you know which side is which. Attach the front of the label to the side with the secret compartment. That way you'll know this side is the side that doesn't pour out water. Now you're ready to perform. Take the can and take a small glass of water. Remember not to use too much water because the can will only hold a certain amount in the secret compartment. Place the water inside the can and then tap it with the magic wand. Now, to make the water vanish, you will pour from the side with the label. That way the water will all go into the secret compartment. Watch. Now the water's gone. You can take the wand and put it inside the can to show it's really gone. Just a couple drops. It's really gone. Now we'll make it reappear. Take the wand again, tap the wand, and to make the water reappear, you'll now pour from the other side of the can, the back. And now the water reappears. And that's the magic paint can. Check out my magic paint can. I've got an empty paint can here and a glass of water. I'm going to pour the water inside the paint can. Now all I need to do is tap it with my makeshift magic wand. And now, look at this. The water is completely vanished. See that? It's gone. I'll even show you. It's completely gone. But now, let's make it come back. To do that, I'll tap the can again. And now, well, I did tell you this was a magic paint can, right? Look at this. The water has now changed the paint. Pretty cool, right? Here's how to perform this great trick. To begin, you'll need a little bit of food coloring inside the can. You can find this at any grocery store. I suggest putting three or four drops. Now, make sure the food coloring is out of sight or else that'll spoil the ending. And now you're ready to go. You get your paint can with the food coloring inside and a small glass of water. Remember, don't use too much water because the secret compartment can only hold so much. Now, to perform it, you'll pour the water inside the paint can. Don't forget in the beginning to show the can empty. That'll make the ending even more impressive. Now, you'll tap the can with your magic wand. I use a paintbrush since it's a paint can, but you could also use a pencil or a real magic wand. Now, the water will vanish. Remember, to make it vanish, you'll pour the can from the front of the label. That way the water will go into the secret compartment. Pour the water out and now it'll be all hidden in the compartment. Use the wand or the paintbrush to prove to your audience that it's really gone. Now you'll make it reappear. To make it reappear, again, tap the can with your wand. Now pour it from the other side, the back, and now the water will not only come out, but it will have changed to green. And that's the magic paint can with the color changing paint. A good magician should always be prepared to do some magic. Now if you don't have any of your catacomb magic props with you, here are some tricks you can perform with objects you can find around the house or at school. Here's a really cool trick you can perform at school or maybe at a restaurant where they give you crayons when you're waiting. All you need are four different colored crayons. Now, Kiva, what I'd like you to do is select one of these crayons and place it in my hand. And then hide the other three so I don't know what you've given me. All okay. right? They are the crayons. I'll turn my back so I can't see what you're going to put in my hand. Just put one in my hand and then hide the other three. Got it? Great. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm ready. They're hidden? Yes. All right, I'm coming back. Okay, now I'm going to try and figure out what color you put in my hand. And all I need you to do is concentrate on the color. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Concentrate deeply. Don't okay. say it, but just concentrate. Here we go. I got it. The color was blue. You're right. All right. There we go. Blue in my hand. You have the other three. Yeah. Pretty cool He's trick, right. right? Thanks for your help. You're welcome. This is a really clever trick, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun performing it. Basically, you need four different colored crayons that are very different in color. 
Green, yellow, blue, and red work very well. To start, ask a friend or a spectator to place one of the crayons in your hand. It doesn't matter which one they place. Let's just say they put the green one in your hand. Now, there's a secret move you're going to be doing behind your back that your audience doesn't see. The secret move is this. When it's behind your back, take your fingernail, your thumbnail, and very carefully scrape off a little bit of the color onto the edge of your fingernail. Now, all you're going to do is bring your hand back out and tell your spectator that you're going to read their mind and figure out what color is in your hand. Now, it's very easy to do that because if you look at the end of your thumb, you'll see a little bit of the color right there in front of you. So all you need to do is be very subtle in looking at the edge of your thumb. Now, what I suggest is bring your hand out like this and moving towards your audience so that as you're looking at your audience member, you can actually look at the edge of your thumb and see that in this case, there's a little bit of green sticking right there on my thumb. Now the rest is just acting. You can then put your hand up to your head and say, okay, concentrate. I've got it. The color was green. And if sure enough, you're right. Flick the little bit of wax crayon off your thumbnail and you're done. Pretty fun trick, huh? Enjoy it. Here's another fantastic trick you can do with an item you find around the house. I have here two pieces of kitchen twine. I'm going to place the two pieces into my hand. Watch close. One, two, three. Just like that, the two pieces become one. Here's how to perform the trick with the twine. Really, you only have one long piece, but there's a secret way of making it look like you have two pieces. Here's how to do that. You're going to need to find the right twine. You're looking for a piece that's made up of many, many smaller pieces of string. Now, to prepare this trick, take a long piece and find the middle. Once you've found the middle, use your fingernails to pull apart the various pieces of string into two separate groups. As you do that, you'll notice that the two separate groups naturally want to curl up. Let them do that and help it along. And what you'll do is create two fake ends on the twine. It now looks like you have two separate pieces, when in reality, you have an X in the middle of the long piece. Now, to perform this trick, you'll hold the two fake ends up like this, hiding the X in your hand. Show the two ends, and then place the whole thing in your hand, hiding the two fake ends in your fist. To get rid of the fake ends, all you need to do is pull on one end and then the other and then open your hand and show that the, ring, the string is restored to one piece. Is it possible to link two separate paper clips without even touching them? I don't think so. But with a little bit of magic, maybe it's possible. Watch this. I have over here two more separate paper clips. I'm going to place the two clips on this $1 bill. I'm going to fold the dollar bill and place the two paper clips in two separate places. One over here and the second one over here on this side. Now you can very clearly see the two paper clips are completely separate on the one dollar bill and I'm not going to touch them. Watch one, two, three. Now they're linked. Here's how to perform this little stunt with the paper clips. All you need are two paper clips and a one dollar bill. Now you're going to need to fold the dollar bill in a very specific way. It's called a Z fold. Take a third of the dollar bill and fold it over the top. Take the other third of the dollar bill and fold it underneath. You've now created the Z fold. You'll now place the paper clips in two separate areas of the bill. Watch close. One paper clip goes within the fold and on the outside. The other paper clip goes in the other fold and on the outside. You'll notice now that they're completely separate, each in the fold and on the outside of the bill. Now all you need to do is pull the bill apart and the two clips will link. Watch close. One, two, three. It's that simple. And that's the linking paper clips. Here's a great card trick you can perform for your friends. How you doing, Van? All right, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing well. Great. Let's do a card trick. Okay. Do me a favor, if you would, give the cards a cut and select a card. 
great. Take a look at the card you cut to. I don't want to see it, but show the camera as well. Great. Now put it back on top of the other pile. Okay. And let's bury it with the other half. Sure. Great. Now let's make it a little harder to find the card. Give the cards another cut. Great. And complete the cut. And why not one more cut? Okay. And complete the cut again. Good. That should make it harder. Yes. Now I'm going to try and find your card, man. I'm going to flip through. If I happen to see your card, don't say anything. Okay. Okay, I don't see it yet. Okay, I'll bet you the next card I turn over is going to be your card. Um, actually, I think you might have messed this one up, Ryan. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Then, is that not your card? Wow, that's pretty cool. The three All of right. hearts. There you, you go, had man. Me. Wow, that's I your card. You're going to turn over the next card in the pile. I know, I know. That's, that's not your card. That's pretty clever. That's your card. Thanks. Thanks for helping. You're welcome. Here's how you can perform this fantastic card trick. All you're going to need is an ordinary deck of playing cards. It can be your deck or a deck you borrow from a friend. Now, before you perform the trick, all you need to do is quickly glance at the bottom card and remember that card. In this case, it's the Two of Diamonds. That's going to be your key card. It'll be important later. Now, place the deck on the table and ask your spectator to cut the cards to select one. They cut the cards and select one. In this case, it's the Three of Hearts. You then ask them to place the Three of Hearts on the top of the cards they cut off. Then take the remaining pack and place it on top. You've now just placed your key card on top of their selection. Now, in order to mix up the cards a little bit, you ask them to cut the cards again. They do so, but actually this won't separate the two cards, so you don't have to worry. You can do it three, four times, as many times as you like, but don't shuffle the cards. That might mess it up. You're now going to tell them you're going to deal through the cards and find theirs. What you're going to really do is deal with the cards face up on the table looking for your key card. Remember, the two of diamonds. You start dealing the cards and ask your spectator not to say anything if they see their card. That might ruin the trick. You deal through looking for your key card, the two of diamonds. I don't see it yet. Maybe, maybe. There it is, two of diamonds. Now the next card is going to be their card. There it is, the three of hearts. But I don't stop there. I'll keep on dealing a few more cards. That's to throw them off. Now what you'll say is, I'll bet you the next card I turn over is going to be your card. At this point, they think you've messed up. But you haven't. You know exactly which card is theirs. So you reach into the pile and turn upside down their three of hearts. And that's the trick. Enjoy it. I'm going to show you a fantastic trick with the mystery deck. I'm going to place the four aces into the pack in four different places. Watch. Put the ace of diamonds right up here, ace of clubs down here, ace of hearts, and the ace of spades. Now you can very clearly see that all four aces really are in four different places inside the pack. I'm going to push them in, and now I'm going to shuffle the cards up. I'm going to shuffle it up pretty well. And now, all I need to do is wave my hands over the deck, and now all four aces have come to the bottom. There's the ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, ace of hearts, and ace of spades. Hi there. Can I show you some magic? Well, I'd love to. I only need one little prop. It's in my briefcase here. You know what it is? Well, it's my magic top hat. You see, it's an empty top hat, nothing inside. But if I wave my hand and snap my fingers now, look at this. Inside is, well, one, two, and three silk handkerchiefs. Now this you're going to love. I have here a magic vending machine. Let me show you how it works. First of all, I'll show you it's empty. Nothing inside. I'll close it up, and now all I need to do is put in a single quarter. And 
just like that, it'll give me a glass of juice. 